everyone, welcome. You have joined us for the League of Women Voters of California's um, webinar on My League Online, which we affectionately refer to as Milo. My name is Elizabeth Leslie, and I'm the Communications Manager at the League of Women Voters of California. Um, and today I'll so, sort of be your host or moderator, if you will, to uh, talk more about Milo. So again, welcome. And um, you are on mute right now. Um, but we will open it up for questions later. So just a couple notes about housekeeping. Um, again, my name is Elizabeth Leslie and I will be helping moderate this uh, webinar today. And we will be taking questions um, and we will be offering, uh, if you will, sort of an overview of what Milo is. And then I will be turning it over to uh, Maurice LeBron, who's going to sort of give us a tour, a live tour uh, on, on screen of Milo and show you some of the basic features and how to do some of the basic editing so that you can get an idea about how Milo works. Um, if you have questions as we go, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, if you're not able to use the chat, uh, we will open it up for questions um, as we go. So you can either use the raise hand function or I will open up mics so that everybody can talk. So with that, just to tell you a little bit of background about Milo, is you may recall the predecessor to Milo was called Lou League Easy Web, which was started by a California League volunteer named Carol Watts uh, back in the uh, very early 90s. So that um, project sort of aged out its software and infrastructure. And so a few years ago, we teamed up uh, with Drupal, which is an open software um, code to create Milo. Um, we have about 220 leagues across the United States that are currently using our system. Um, one of the great features about Milo is something called shared content and subscribed content, if you will. And Amaris will be going over some of those in a bit. Um, but just a note about um, there, I will be dropping into chat link to how you can sign up and look at costs and that sort of thing. We do offer support to help you get your website started um, for we, we offer some uh, different costs for that and we will again add that link to the chat. There are also many ways to get help with Milo. We have a very extensive documentation section of our our working Milo site that includes both written documentation as well as video documentation as we know people learn in different ways. In addition to that, we have a peer Google group with all of our Milo users where you can trade great ideas, best practices, or look for announcements from us uh, announcing what we call our office hours, which Amaris hosts every Friday on a variety of topics or sometimes it's just an open topic so you can get live on the spot help. We also offer by, by appointment help with Omri's. You can email us for help um, and we're happy to help in that way. And another aspect of what makes our system so strong is we are on Amazon Web Services um, and we work with a team called Shepherds, which is our tech support team that helps us with any problems or challenges. We are also supported by League of Women Voters of the United States, and we are under the LWV domain. So what that means is that we perform much better in search engines like Google than other websites. So meaning uh, about 85 to 90% of the people that find our websites in Milo are dropping a term like voter guide, Oakland, into Google, and they're finding us in that manner. Um, so, Again, that is one of the great uh, things about partnering with LWV US on Amazon Web Services under their domain to provide a safe and secure um, website offering. Um, so with that, I wanna just take a moment and introduce, really she's kind of the star of the show um, and she's the person that you interact with most once you sign up with Milo. Um, and she and I have been working together, gosh, almost 10 years now, Amaris, eight years now, I think. Um, and her name is Amaris LeBron. She's on the other end of most of the customer service calls and the office hours. And she does uh, much of the help setting up our sites um, of which we have different design features and different different menu features, um, which she's going to go over. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Amaris. So you can go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Amaris. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and just start off with sharing my screen here so that we can get a look at whoops, what Milo uh, is here um, to get a good sense of 
um, well, besides uh, the description that Elizabeth gave us here of what Milo is, we do have a bit of a description as well on our Milo homepage. Um, along with that, we have a link to our documentation, which is just one of the um, many resources of help that we offer. Um, but to get started, I'm going to actually log out so we can start the process as if I um, am coming in here brand new. So across most any page or site within Milo, um, you're going to have the login bar across the top. Um, you can log in with your username or your email address. And um, once you are logged in, uh, this is from the Milo homepage, I'm presented with a box of my league sites. So this is a quick way to be able to get to my websites. Um, it will list a league site that you are a member of. And when I speak of member, it is specifically um, a member within Milo. So um, the member, uh, regardless of league membership, um, can have access to the website as long as a webmaster gives them access. Um, and then the other level of uh, membership is being a webmaster of that league. And so either one of those cases, you'll have a link to quickly get to the homepage of your website. So let's show off the demo site here. Um, I wanna first point out the menu. This is a completely customizable menu. You can add um, as many submenu items to it, uh, essentially kind of um, child links that live under these main menu items, and you can have as many main menu items as you want. Um, it will just keep extending down the page. Uh, the other um, things that uh, we do offer as far as the look of your site, this is the, um, the default look where we have the red and blue colors with the left hand side menu. We have a newer theme that is um, com complements the LWB.org site, and it's our purple and gold theme. Um, that theme itself has two different offerings of um, how that can look. And it can be a, a menu on the left hand side or a menu across the top. If you see the links that Elizabeth is dropping in the chat, um, the link that I'm referring to is linked to the costs and MOU info. On that page, um, you'll see that there's three different links to see the, the design options. Um, so under the menu, we have um, a site search that's available specifically for each site that you visit on Milo. Um, and then under that, we have the sidebar. So all these different um, tools that we have added here, the different voter uh, information widgets and the social media widget are all added to the sidebar of the site. This is um, a special little spot across your site because it is visible on any page. So um, you manage the changes to the sidebar section through your home page, but um, visiting any other page on your site you'll um, still have a chance to use those tools. Um, coming back to the home page, when we use this sidebar, we see a lot of um, times leagues are adding their social media to it. Um, usually you'll have some quick buttons to get to the uh, page itself on your social media, or you can have these um, cool little widgets but that is totally up to you and customizable um, for your league. Down in the footer, we also have this nice little section for additional um, links to those social media pages. We have a possible Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube um, logo. So as long as you put a link into that section, the logo will appear. Um, so it doesn't have to, it could be any uh, link that you want to use to, to bring up that logo there. And coming back up the page, these different um, items that we see here, essentially like a preview um, of the different pages or event events or content across this site, this demo site, um, we see that there's kind of a, a summary list of each item here. 
uh, we refer to this as promoted content and it is um, not only stuff that belongs or content that belongs to this demo site specifically it is also um, other articles and um, action alerts that come from other leagues on Milo but outside of the demo site so we have California's article here that uh, the demo site has been able to promote to their front page. Um, this is the just shows the interconnectedness of Milo and um, the subscriptions that um, bring a lot of power to uh, your Milo site. We'll definitely get into the subscriptions in more detail um, in a second. But yeah, Elizabeth. I just wanted to um, give an example for uh, folks that may be outside of California, because in California, uh, our state website feeds all of the local Milo sites uh, with content. Um, the way that works, and again, Amrys will show you uh, actually how to do that in a moment. But what that means, for example, is you don't have to post the action alerts from LWB US. They will be automatically posted to your site under your action alert tab, and you can choose whether the, that content is promoted to the, the front page. That's entirely up to you. That's all I want to add, Amrys. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So. Um, totally customizable list and and we'll get into the subscriptions a little bit more in a little bit later. Um, and then lastly, on your home page here, you have the slideshow. Um, you're able to manage this item by item. So each slideshow item that you create, you are adding to this um, entire slideshow. So that's where I want to continue. We're going to actually create a slideshow item. Um, and before and you do that, while you're getting set up to, to show them that back end, I just wanted to add a couple notations about um, images uh, on our site. And we are very careful about making sure there are several steps Amrice will show you to make sure that the image that you're using is allowed and permitted to be used. Um, on your site. In addition, we have an entire media library filled with images that are safe to use that you may use on your site. Um, also related to how well our sites perform in search engine is there are key words uh, people use when they upload these images that allow them to be found. So when people are searching for information, the photos help people find things as well as the content. And I know Amrace will point out those key words or sometimes referred to as meta tags, which help, which are very helpful in the algorithm of search engines like Google. Definitely. Yeah, the, the more information that you can add on a piece of content or even your web pages, the better. Um, so let's, yeah, let's jump right into adding that slideshow item. The administrator league menu is something that's available on your homepage and um, a, a few other pages aside from that. Um, but it is one of your main sources of uh, help and and to be able to manage your site. So um, anytime that you want to create brand new content, this is where you'll come to. So we're going to add the slideshow item and we're prompted with a, a brand new fresh uh, editing form to begin adding our um, information. So I'm just going to give it a simple title of slideshow. And now here um, we have our first required piece the slideshow image. As soon as I click the browse button, I met with our media browser pop up um, and I have five different tabs to choose from. I can upload my own new file from my current computer. Um, I can upload from the web. Uh, this is really helpful when you have a YouTube or Vimeo video that you can just drop the URL um, into here with. And then the next three files are all images that exist within the media library already. So um, you can have a distinction between ones that are personal to you as far as the ones you've uploaded. Um, my league's files includes any other webmasters that are part of your um, league or group. And then all files is just one complete list of um, all of the images that are um, permissible to be used 
on our website. Um, so this is a question here. Um, I have permission to use this document on our website. It's asked on every single upload, whether it is an image or a document, every single uh, file upload um, must be confirmed with permission to, to use that file. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just use one of the images that is existing in the media library already. But what I can do is narrow down my search. So we have different media tags here. Um, we require that at least one um, be selected upon every file upload uh, so that it encourages the use of those. You can use as, select as many as um, apply to the file that you're uploading because it just is super helpful to be able to find these again when you have a lot of um, information added to it when you're uploading it, it will make it just that much more easy um, to be able to search for that image again. So you're not only helping yourself, you're helping other webmasters on Milo. Um, I'll go ahead and search for a slideshow image. Um, the other option I could have done too would be to add a, an issue um, area and that might have narrowed it down. But I will just go with our vote411.org image here. Um, once I select that, I can submit my selection. Uh, and for the most part, you will uh, be able to find um, really useful images in the media library, especially when it comes to slideshow images. Um, but we also have a note here that um, the optimal size um, the dimensions would be 800 by 400 pixels if you are creating your own images or uploading your own. From there, um, I'll just fill in the information here so that we can see um, what each piece of a slideshow item looks like. Um, this will just be a link back to our homepage, but that's okay. Um, you can have this open in a new window, especially if you're having them go to um, a website outside of your own. And I'll add some caption here. Um, when it comes to most any um, content item that you're editing, uh, whether it's a slideshow item, an article, an event, or a regular page, you're going to have the WYSIWYG toolbar here. So. Um, all these tools that are available to you are very similar to Word. Um, it is going to respond um, in a way that you are uh, making a change here. So as soon as I make something bold, I should be seeing the change as it would be in Word. Um, you have different styles as well available to you. Um, it's definitely something to uh, play around with. Um, and we have documentation on the different formatting styles here, but I will go ahead and um, leave that without any formatting for now. And let's go ahead and add this to our site. Um, I have one other option here to make this item sticky at the top of my list. So um, that comes in handy if you have more than one slideshow item, it will always be your opener um, slide. From here, the moderation notes are also useful if you have more than one webmaster. Um, you can add different notes so that you're always keeping track of the different tasks that needed to be done. Um, and let's just make that straight to published and we'll see that on the homepage. So here we have a bit of a preview, but we won't know what it looks like until we get to the home page, and we'll see it here. And so the link to about, I have that opening in a new page, and that was just the link to the home page. So that's how we can quickly add a new slideshow item, and um, it will by default be the um, newest item and uh, top of the list at that point. From there, um, let's show off our different uh, lists of subscribed content. Um, we talked about how you can promote different subscribed content to our front page. Um, and 
when it comes to where those uh, subscribed items live, it is uh, the different articles, the action alerts, um, and the positions that you'll see which leagues um, the demo site is subscribed to. So I have uh, the California articles um, coming in to my demo site here. They are coming in directly and uh, as soon as they are posted, they are posted to my site as well um, because I'm subscribed to them. I am going to go ahead and, um, well, before I edit the article, I'll just quickly show that action alerts um, and positions are um, similar. We have the list of subscribed action alerts down here as well, and all of the active um, and upcoming action alerts from the leagues that I'm subscribed to appear here. Um, and then the positions are a bit different. They are not going to expire. It's similar to the articles. Um, so these will remain unless the owner league um, completely deletes them from their site. And then the- and just to interject about a little bit about the positions is I think many people on here may already know that um, LWV's website no longer lists the positions out in this manner. You can only access them by one gigantic PDF. So in our advocacy work, this is fairly important because people want to know why we took action on something and we're able to easily relate it back to the positions that all live on the California site. Exactly. And then you can refer to um, the entire list if you uh, link it from the National League's Milo page uh, that's specifically their positions. Um, and then just the last one that you can subscribe to as well. Again, I'll um, talk a bit more about subscriptions, um, but the events are um, something that you can subscribe to uh, from another league. So we have a mix of my own events, um, as well as the ones that I'm subscribed to, Sacramento County being one. And I'm going to interrupt you again, no, Maurice. Uh, with it. two things. One, um, if you could also talk a little bit about how you can co-host an event with another league um, sure. on here. Um, that's something that often really helps with attendance. We know that is a challenge for people to get uh, folks to their events, so that's one way to, to help that work. Um, and I have a question from Emily Strauss about what content can I subscribe to in Oregon? Um, so if you're able to show that in your next aspect of your demonstration. And one last thing, just to remind everyone, I, I think I neglected to mention this from the beginning, is that um, when you receive your new Milo site, you have many, many pages and templates already set up with sort of standard boilerplate content. So you're not starting with zero, you're starting with pre-populated content, which is very easy for you to go and update or not. So, you know, just think about information about the league is pretty standard, you know, those sorts of things. So it, it is not a blank slate by any means. Um, and you can obviously look at other, you know, some leagues do a lot more in their voting section that you might want to use for your, if you're using vote 411 and, and so forth. So just want to make sure I added that. Thanks, Omri. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, that, that is a, a good point. And um, while we're, while you mentioned that, um, I want to point out that the sample basic site is a pretty good example, and I'll drop this in the chat. It's a pretty good example of what you will receive um, when you join Milo. Um, that is uh, as close to the template as you will receive. Definitely some of the um, items will be a bit different because we do try to provide two slideshow items that are, um, you know, we've, we'll pull the image either from your existing site or from your social media. Um, and so you'll have that. You'll also have your specific social media buttons in the footer and in the sidebar. Um, and then your, your login as webmaster, but that won't be um, added to your site. But uh, take a look at that sample basic site to see um, what your template would look like there. Um, well, instead of uh, editing an article, why don't we actually edit um, one of these calendar items? Um, if you are looking at the calendar, you have a quick uh, way to access some of your webmaster um, tools here. When you um, hover over it, you have that little cog. 
So that's one way to begin editing um, an existing event. If you're taking a look at the uh, event itself and you know wanting to check it out and say, okay, this is the actual one I need to make changes to, again, you have the new draft button there. And I will make a few changes to um, add uh, something in the body of this event. Um, and I will add an image as well. So what I want to do is add an image at the top of the page. So um, this main image field not only adds it at the top of the page, but it also gives me a little thumbnail when I'm looking at the preview of this event um, on the calendar itself. So again, when I click the browse button, I get the uh, media browser and um, I'm able to either upload from my computer or search through the existing uh, files. I'm just gonna use um, one of the existing files. Actually, let's see if I have something myself. Okay, we're gonna use this DEI image and submit. And once that drops in, then um, you're set to go. And actually you can move on. My computer's probably taken a while for it to load in there. Um, when you uh, provide location information, it will automatically create a link to uh, Google Maps um, so that the, the person can uh, easily find directions to the location. And if I could just add to that too, that between 60 and 70%, depending on the location of people that are using Milo are using it from a mobile device. So that becomes increasingly important with this type of an opportunity because people say, wait, where am I going for this voter voting forum again? And they can easily access the map from their phone. Yes, yeah, and it, it is one of those convenient items um, for mobile users there. So I'm gonna just drop in some filler text. Um, let's go ahead and just format this as if I am setting this up for, um, if it actually was uh, sensical information. Um, I am going to um, make this a heading on the page. Um, we recommend using headings and especially using them in the order um, that they are provided. So if you have a, a heading three that you're starting out with, the um, next best heading to use is heading four so that it is following in order. Um, when they are used in this manner, it is um, creating more accessible content um, within your site, and it is um, helpful for uh, low to no vision users who are um, coming and reading the site. So um, that's just uh, one quick note, and th these are um, also items that we make recommendations uh, about in our documentation. Um, but another style um, that we have, other than the special, the notice is really nice um, to make things stand out. Um, and let's do one more. Beyond that, when you, especially when you have something that is linked to, um, the button formatting is useful because it essentially changes color. It uh, darkens when um, you hover over that item. And we have an image already on the page, so I won't add one in the body. Let's go ahead and move on to other parts of the event. Um, the contact information you can add um, separately. Why don't we add my information? Um, it will be a section that's at the very bottom of your event page. Um, and then here we have the co-hosting leagues uh, section that Elizabeth had mentioned. Um, these are all leagues that exist in Milo. Um, if you ever wanted to see this list uh, and have an idea of who is on Milo so that I know who I can subscribe to, um, you just have to visit our homepage. So my.lwv.org has a full and complete list of the leagues on Milo. Um, there is one thing to note, though, that not every single state that is listed uh, is on Milo, some of these states do have to exist so that the local league within that state 
um, may exist and, and be public. So um, that's just one note there, but for the most part, um, we have all of uh, these leagues um, available to be subscribed to on Milo. And I'm going to interrupt you one more time, Amrise. Uh, Go for it. Thank you for pointing that out because, in fact, LWD Oregon is not on Milo. Um, but in order to set the local leagues up, we do set up a basic Oregon page. So if they were to join Milo, then you could subscribe to their content. But since they're not on Milo, you can't do that at this time. And I did get a question from Sherry about the use of color text. Can you talk about the fonts and color options? Yeah, sure. Um, Again, with accessibility, that, that was one of our um, big motivators to um, try to keep the formatting as clear um, as possible. And so font color is not um, an option within the WYSIWYG toolbar. Um, it is uh, just the paragraph or uh, the text size. Essentially, the paragraph size is the text size um, and then the different heading sizes the heading three does change up the text color a little bit, but that is really the customization options that you have for the font itself. And um, I, while you mentioned Oregon, um, although we don't have the state of Oregon, because we have um, that kind of filler site existing for now, uh, we do, it, the reason for that is because we do have local leagues in Oregon. Um, so, as far as the two that are live we um, and public, we have Clackamas County and Coos County that you would be able to subscribe to at this time. Okay, so coming back over to the event, let's throw in um, a league or two for the co-hosting co leagues. Um, so because this is an all-inclusive list, it's not gonna show you by state. You will just have to know at least the beginning of the league's name. Um, or any part of it, actually. So if it is a, a two or more word um, league name, then you can type in any portion of it and it should narrow down the list. And um, I'll go ahead and leave just one for now. Um, just make sure that you don't uh, add in your own league um, because you're as you're creating the event yourself, you're already the host of this event. You don't have to list yourself as a co-host. And then you have an option to list additional event hosts that are outside of Milo. Um, you can list other leagues that are outside of Milo um, and any other organizations, um, but it creates a link to that organization, whatever the title is that you provide. And let's go ahead and add um, for now, I'll just add in the homepage uh, URL, but this is best used for a Zoom link or um, whatever type of uh, registration page they need to use to be able to um, get to this event. The field itself is just going to respond if you have any URL. So that's why I'm just adding um, this URL for filler because it will still uh, make that button for registration. And then the tags down here are uh, really useful and really powerful because they create a kind of a web of content. So um, depending on what my event is about, I might type in uh, different words or phrases. Um, and the tags are created through the system as you um, add in a tag and you save your changes. Um, there's a couple of things that happen with tags. One thing um, is that it allows the visitors to the page to be able to click through and see, oh, there's a voter service uh, tags page. Let me see what other leagues are doing in regards to voter service. Um, and then on top of that, because that extra page is created, that is another place that's linking to um, co uh, your content or other leagues content. That's just another, um, it's adding another layer of uh, popularity, I guess, especially when it's SEO. Um, when you're thinking of search engine optimization, you are adding more traffic to your content by way of more clicks. 
Um, so making use of these tags is, is one easy way to beef up your um, visibility. So I'll just add a couple. These are probably already in the system. Um, but the only thing you need to do is uh, separate them by a comma and you're good to go. Additionally, you can um, refer to different issues uh, within this event. All of these issues are taken from either the National League or from um, our league, uh, the California League. And the same with the positions. These are all across Milo, so you could refer to any league's position on Milo. Um, and similar, similarly here, the committees, um, these are created per league, so um, same idea there. But we'll go ahead and publish this. Um, we want to see it immediately. We won't um, worry about a different draft for now. And while you're waiting for that to publish, I got a question about buttons and I'm not sure if they mean in the sidebar or in the body, but there was a question about, are you able to center buttons or do they have to be left justified? And I, I believe that the ones on in the sidebar are as is and in the body, you are able to center them. Am I correct in that assumption? Um, I believe, well, in the sidebar, you can center them. Um, the Body buttons, I'm assuming this is the button type of button that's um, being referred to. Those should be able to be centered as well. Um, that option is listed under styles, the center option. Um, so as you apply the button style, you can also apply the center style um, on top of that. Um, okay, so we have the um, published item here. This is the main image that we see. Um, I also want to open it up on the calendar um, because not only does this image show up here at the top of the page, what we refer to as the hero spot, um, it is also here on the, uh, in the little thumbnail side of the preview. Um, this is also like the summary of the event. Um, I'm going to keep kind of going back and forth between these. So um, back on the main page of the event, we have the location, um, the uh, register for the event button, and then the beginning of what I added into the body. Um, and actually, we see everything, obviously, the contact information as well. Um, coming back over to the preview, we see the beginning of what's in the body, and then we see the registration button. So um, those are the two items that get seen in the preview, depending on uh, how long your the body information is, um, you may have more text or less, um, just depending on how much information you have there and how much formatting. But then coming back over to the preview or the um, actual event page that we're viewing, now we see the tags here down at the bottom. Um, it provides a link to each list of um, tags or items that are related to these tags. So when I click over to that, I see the tag again. And then every single league that has related to this in their tags, um, it could be, I believe, an article or an event. Um, so it is across the nation. Any league that is on Milo can be listed here. And because of that, um, you could also add a little description um, to the or above the tags if you are, um, you know, hoping to make a lot of use of these. If uh, folks are going to see information from across the nation, um, but that is just one cool way um, for not only, like we said, to beef up your SEO and to provide more interconnectedness to your site. It is just um, a nice way for your site visitors to see, okay, wow, well, the leagues really do work across the nation and we are, um, you know, working on similar things. So they'll see our, our message and mis mission um, are actually, you know, one. And let's see, from here, um, I think let's go ahead and 
check out the subscriptions. So um, we saw how they look on the public side um, in the lists of subscribed articles or action alerts or positions or events. Um, and we also saw what they look like on the homepage if we decide to promote them. Um, but now let's take a look at, um, I'm gonna start a new draft of the homepage because this is where we get to manage the subscriptions. Um, you are able to subscribe again to four different types of content. Um, I'm gonna scroll down specifically to the subscription section. Um, those four types of content again are action alerts, articles, events, and positions. Um, if a league is on Milo and they do not create this type of content, then if you subscribe to that, you will not receive that content. Um, so that is just one thing uh, to make sure of. You can always make sure if a league that you are subscribing to has that content or not by visiting that league's, uh, that specific league's action alert page or article page um, and taking a look for yourself. If there is nothing there, it will always say, there's no current action alerts at this time, check back soon, something along those lines. Um, you can scroll down this list or again, start typing in um, by the name of the league. And then to remove one, it is um, simply by using the little X next to their name. Um, when you subscribe to a content type uh, from a specific league, you are going to receive all of them. So um, you would receive their entire calendar of, of events if you're subscribing to the events. So I've made a change, let's see, to the demo local action alerts. I'm not sure exactly if they have those, so I'll make another change. I'm going to do Sacramento for the positions as well. So I've added new subscriptions. Okay, and um, being that the subscriptions are not only affecting my homepage, but they're affecting my whole site, I'm publishing that again. Um, I wanna see that change right on through. So now let's check out the action alerts, because again, I'm not entirely sure if the demo local site had those. Um, and so I think it's one of those situations where I subscribed, but the demo local doesn't actually have any current and existing um, action alerts. So that's the reason why I'm not seeing anything here. But let's check out the positions because I believe Sacramento County does. And there we go. So as soon as I publish and save the change to my homepage, um, then I immediately begin to receive the content from that new subscription. And Amrish, I'm going to give us a time check. Uh, we are at about 1245. So I wanted to make sure that we um, talked about another offering and of which there are very many in, in our Milo site, but uh, we're trying to just highlight the top ones at this time. And we want to mention uh, that we have a members only offering. So we have a special password protected members only section that you may or may not use. And I don't know, maybe I'm sure you could speak to how many are using it or not using it, but um, some people uh, are taking advantage of that. So if you want a shared space to put your board meeting notes or other sort of internal information that you don't wanna share with the public. Um, if you give us your spreadsheet of members, we offer a one-time upload to put them all in the system and they'll automatically be generated an email so that they can um, log in themselves and see any of this password protected content that you want um, to be safe. Just a couple other housekeeping notes um, about um, Emails, for example, we don't provide emails, but what we have been suggesting for people is to get the nonprofit Google Suite offering, which can give you um, emails um, and there can be forwards to emails, that sort of thing. And we have a lot of documentation on that too. Um, so we're happy to help you with that. Um, I did also get a request, Amaris, to show a purple and gold site. If you could show how that looks on the screen as well. 
Um, and then just a note also, we don't handle payment system. That is a third party vendor. Most leagues use PayPal. Um, so when you see join, you will see that they are going to most often head to a PayPal site, which you can manage easily. Um, and so that also means that our site is very secured, even with the password protected members only. We are not handling financial transactions through the Milo site. So there's no fear of security in that manner. So I'm gonna pass it back to you, Amaris, to show people around. And I'd like to just highlight a couple other things on this particular page you can see here is you can see where the don donate and join buttons are at, top, at the top there on the top right, if you prefer that. Um, so, and again, you can change this at any time. So say you try the purple and gold and you decide you don't like it or you don't like your menu choices, you can change those at any time. Um, so that's not a problem at all. You also have full manipulation of your menu. If you wanna add things, subtract things, reorder things, um, and just a little note, just sort of about communication best practices is we remind mm -hmm. people about something we call bite snack meal. Give them a little bit, give them a little bit more, then give them out a lot, uh, a lot of information. So you'll see you get sort of the title, a little summary, then if they wanna drill down, they can, they can get even more information. Um, in addition to that, we highly recommend that you put information on your site in more than one place. So for example, you may have the event in the event section. You may also wanna highlight it in your slideshow. You may also wanna write, put an article on the homepage about it and also share it on your social media. Uh, people enter your site from many different places. Not everybody just enters from the homepage. So it's pretty important that you use those tags, you use the keywords, you use the images and fill out all of those fields as they are offered to you so that they can be found in search engines and get the user to where they need to be um, and keep them on your site. The average adult stays on the site for about two and a half minutes. League folks are a little longer because we got a lot of great stuff. We're like up to seven minutes, I think. Um, but also the average adult, only about 20% ever scroll past the first page. So you don't want to overwhelm people with information. Like I said, it's a bite, snack, meal um, type of situation. And I just want to also acknowledge um, in the... Um, chat, um, nonprofit Google Suite is only free for 501c3 organizations, so that is correct. Um, 501c4s were not eligible. Um, we are highly suggesting that people, you know, still consider using Google. It's not super expensive. Um, and also you can get, you know, topical emails, um, and then it's easier to forward them as you have changeover in your leadership and to use Google Docs to house some of your information so you don't have to just email attachments. Um, we at the State League in California, we use a combination of Dropbox and Google uh, for our information. Um, just a couple of tips about that. You could also seek out email through your domain provider. Um, sometimes they will provide, uh, depending on who you use, and again, Amri, you can probably speak to this more than, than I, but often they will provide like, I don't know, five to 10 emails per domain. Um, and you can also um, do that through your domain. So that's another thing, Amaris, that I, I would like you to ask you to cover um, about the domains and the vanity URLs as well. And we also, again, keep in mind, we help you the entire process to get your site set up. Again, we're available in person, in the office hours weekly, live on the phone, through email. We're all, always reachable um, through any, many of those methods. And then we have our peer group if you're looking to bounce ideas off people about what worked for them. Uh, for example, some people have multiple webmasters and how do they set up that structure of approval process? So there's a lot of great resources available to you. We also are, um, we take feedback from our users. We are here to serve you guys. So if there's something you want or you see, we call them feature requests. Um, we keep a running list of feature requests. The more people that request something, that bumps it higher on our list. And then as we get money and time, we work with our tech team to implement those changes um, so that we're always um, creating something that works for you. So I've done a lot of talking, so I'm gonna hit, pass it back to you, Amaris, to see if you could answer um, a few more questions, except I have one more here. Um, and I'll put a link to this in, in uh, chat. They want to learn more about Club Express integration. I'm, I'm happy to provide that information here, although we don't talk to Club Express at all. 
Um, that is um, an, an independent uh, offering aside from what we offer, but we can integrate with them as far as our template sites. They offer um, database management that uh, works with Nationals database. Um, they are very expensive. We are not expensive, um, but I'm happy to drop an FAQ uh, in the chat for that as Omri's takes away on those other items I mentioned. Certainly. Um, and then one last thing about the Club Express integration. It, it is um, not, as Elizabeth said, it, it isn't like our system is talking with the Club Express system. There isn't any, any connection there. Um, it is simply uh, like a link to that site. So what you could do is create a menu link that would link to your Club Express payment page or whatever it is that um, would be the destination. So it isn't a, a complete connection to the Club Express system here with Milo. Um, when it comes to your domain, um, you are able to um, redirect your domain, your vanity URL to your Milo um, website. So uh, most leagues usually have something short and sweet, LWV um, something or other .org. And that is what you can um, Continue to use publicly. Uh, that is what we recommend, you know, for print items and, and web. Uh, that is usually what looks short and sweet. Um, but in the um, grand scheme of things to improve SEO and to um, keep your ranking high, um, we use the Milo URL. So um, I'm going to use the Los Angeles League as an example. Whoops. They have the lwvlosangeles.org URL as, as their domain. Um, as soon as I hit enter in my address bar, the URL changes to my, the Milo URL um, for LWV Greater Los Angeles. So um, this is, again, to keep your ranking high and to keep the um, SEO that you have built through the lwv.org domain, it, it keeps it intact. Um, the vanity URL is still going to, you know, be useful and make its uh, way to the homepage, um, but having it remain visible um, can deteriorate your uh, ranking um, uh, because it is looking like duplicate content to uh, the search engines that are crawling for um, their results. Um, when it comes to the emails that we were talking about just a second ago, um, although we don't offer emails through Milo, we do offer a web form that you can create. It's a type of content um, and it is a way that you can gather someone's, um, you know, message and send it anonymously essentially. So the person who is filling out the message won't be able to see who is the recipient. Um, and in that way, you are safe to use your personal email addresses um, because only you and other webmasters would be able to see it. Um, that is one offering that, um, you know, comes in handy if you aren't looking to um, have a separate email service if your domain doesn't provide it. Um, but like Elizabeth said, there are uh, om almost all domains offer at least even a paid service, if not a free service, um, whether it's an inbox that they're providing that has the, um, the domain ending of your, um, you know, LWV something.org or uh, sometimes we often see alias email addresses. So it isn't specifically an inbox, um, but it's kind of like a, a mask that you're putting over your email address. You say, this is the email address I want you to show to the world, info at lwvsomething.org. Um, but then all of the messages that are sent to that address are actually going to fall into uh, my alebron at lwvc.org. Um, so definitely check into your domain service as an option for that. Um, but know that we have the web forms if, um, you know, you need that to fall back onto. 
And I think with that, unless we have any other questions, um, I am just about out of things to show. <laughs> well, I was gonna mention too, I, I said we offer both, um, you know, written documentation as well as video. So I wanted to uh, remind folks, we actually have an entire YouTube channel dedicated to all of our videos. And I just dropped one in there in the chat um, about forms because there's many, many reasons to create forms. Are you signing up for an event? Are you looking for volunteers? Are you running a voter registration drive? Do people want more information? So there's many reasons to create these forms. It also allows you to just keep better track and to hand off things as there's changes in leadership. Um, I did receive another question here. I'm going to just go ahead and read it out loud to the group. Uh, serving the communities of section. We had to take ours down a while ago due to a tech issue. How to get it back? Um, so my suggestion is to email directly to Amaris A. LeBron at lwvc.org um, so that uh, she can help you directly with that issue. It shouldn't take long for her to restore that for you. Um, and then I did get another question. How do you add the social media widget at the bottom? I'm not sure if you mean the, the, the icons, I think maybe. Um, so these here at the, at the footer. Okay, she's nodding. So I think that's a yes. Okay. So yeah, I can show that off before quickly we go over that. Yeah, it's done through the home page. Um, let's get into a new draft of this. It is specifically in the lead contact information section. So going past the body of the page, we have all of these different sections. Um, and the one that Roberta was referring to earlier that um, we'll be able to deal with for her individual site, those are the call outs at the top of the field. Um, but then lead contact information is what Sherry is referring to for those um, links. So going past the contact info, um, it's the social links for footer section. So um, all of this, the lead contact info all appears in the footer, um, but this specifically is what you're referring to. And again, if you add any URL, it's going to appear as that logo. So you have four to um, use there. And once you make a change, um, come down to the bottom, make sure your moderation state is set to published, and then you can save so you see that change immediately. And another note about social media channels, you, know, you may think, well, gosh, that's all the way at the bottom, but it's, you know, it's a communications website best practice that you're going to find it either at the bottom or at the top. But this is why I remind everyone that if you're just launching your new Instagram site, it's a great idea to add it to your slideshow. It's a great idea to add it to an article. Hey, come see our Instagram site. So again, adding things in multiple places. Um, I have another question here from, from Mary Jo. Uh, may want to show how menu items can contain other pages in a sub menu items. Thank, thank you, that's a great question. Um, oh, yeah. Mary, do you wanna show, show that off? Yeah, I think we do have um, some that are living under here. So um, you also have the option, obviously we just saw right now, before I click through to about the, this little sub menu um, was collapsed, so it wasn't visible, um, but you can set up your menu so that if you have a left hand side menu, you can choose to have the about main menu item um, remain as expanded so that it's always showing off its sub menu items. Um, but this just speaks to you can have a menu as big as you want um, and keep them hidden until um, you click upon them or um, keep them expanded. Um, one quick way to get to the menu uh, from any any page across your site is to access that little cog once you hover over it and um, list links will get you to um, be able to edit the menu links that you currently have. Um, you can edit them individually. You can rearrange them easily when you move a main menu item or any menu item that has sub menu items, it's going to move with its child items. So it's gonna have those sub menu items underneath it. And anytime you make changes, you just save down at the bottom um, once you make changes to the list. 
And this is pretty important to utilize. You know, if you're sending people from, say, your newsletter to your homepage, or, you know, there's a link on your Facebook page to your homepage, you know, maybe it's not an election year for you. You know, here in California, we're always having elections. So for us, it's a little different, but maybe you want, um, you know, voting or newsletters at the top, or maybe you're doing uh, a bunch of lobbying and you want advocacy at the top. Or, so, you know, uh, you should always be thinking about things to freshen up your website. Um, we do think the terminology for the menu should stay pretty consistent because in our best practice studies, you know, uh, although people want to call it the voter, you know, which are what our newsletters are called, most people don't know what that is. And so we want to remind people, don't forget to make your website, you know, non-jargon, accessible to others that have never heard of the league, because they're going to Google voter guide. And, you know, they need to not use the word voter service. Nobody knows what that means, except for league people. Uh, in the same way, calling it a newsletter is just a better option than the voter. I mean, once they get to the newsletter page, calling it the voter is great. Um, but that's just an, another option uh, there. You can also embed Google um, in there. And I don't know if you have an example of that. You might be able to show Amaris. But I'm going to just say, uh, does anybody else have any questions? Because we are getting close to needing to wrap up. So if you're not able to use the chat box, can you please try to either raise your hand or send me a direct message? Or I can try to unmute anyone, everyone. I don't know if I can do that, Amaris, but I could attempt to unmute everyone, but it could get crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure if we have that function. I don't um, see anyone with their hand raised. So I think I will I think I will let you wrap it up with sort of showing how you could embed. Um, and I think you can also show the embed a video option. Do we have the YouTube embed option available as well um, as the Google form or just the Google form? As far as like into the to, into a page? Correct. I can um, I can quickly pull a, a YouTube um embed but it might be a little harder for me to find one for uh the google form so yeah i'll do a, um, a youtube example so um you're able to embed a video and this is useful when you want to have the video visible like in the middle of your page um, your other option too is to upload it to the media library um, by its URL. So um, we're just going to use the embed code for this example. Okay, sorry, just got to copy the embed code from a video. Um, what I want to do is just add it here under this yellow notice box um, and above the Women's Equality Day. So making a new draft of the home page. Let's go ahead and start a new line. So my cursor is blinking at the end of the notice box and I'm gonna hit enter. Um, this can often happen where the formatting is, you know, held on, has held onto the cursor, um, but we have a remove formatting button. It's a little eraser that should get rid of that and start you out fresh um, again on a blank line this time. So um, when it comes to embed code, what we want to do is actually swap. Um, we call this our text editor. So WYSIWYG is the default text editor. Um, but what we want to change this to is the full HTML use with care. So once we do that, what that does is it no longer um, renders the formatting that we want to see it spits it out in HTML instead. So we see a bunch of carrots everywhere, um, a bunch of HTML tags everywhere, uh, but that's what we want to see because the embed code that we're working with is written in HTML. So I have it copied to my clipboard. I am pasting it in. Um, usually uh, YouTube is pretty consistent when it comes to their embed code. Uh, it should be an iframe tag most of the time, I, I believe. Um, so once you paste that in, what you're going to want to do is leave it set to full HTML. Um, this way it is going to display properly and work properly. So that's all I have to do to add in that video. Um, I'm ready to save. Add a quick note and I'll publish before I save. Um, actually, 
let's leave it as a draft because we haven't seen a draft yet this um, during this demonstration. So I'll save my draft changes. Um, now I have two different buttons. I'm viewing the draft. Um, I can click that button or I know that I'm looking at the draft because it says draft at the top. But now here I have the quick little uh, preview or um, a, a little version of my video. Um, and you can still view this on, let's see, on YouTube itself. If you click on the title, it opens up the video on youtube.com. And this is a fantastic thing to do with your candidate forums. Um, not only does, you know, when someone comes to their site, they go, oh, this is what the league does. Oh, maybe I want to join because look at this cool forum they're doing or, you know, gives visibility to candidates, to your linking to your voter guides. I mean, there's just so much, uh, if you have an event and you later want to put your event here, you know, it's just a great way to thank your supporters or donors to sponsors of your event. So, you know, people are very visually interested uh, uh, these days. So being able to embed videos is a really fantastic option um, uh, for people to make sure that they're getting a lot of visibility on, on those videos. So thanks so much for showing that, Amaris. We're, we're at about 107, so we'd like to start wrapping it up now. We really appreciate everyone attending today. I hope we answered all of your questions. I put in the chat um, uh, a link to our email address. We are Milo, so that's M-Y-L-O, at lwvc.org. We're happy to answer any questions via email. You can always pick up the phone and call us um, as well. And I'll put the phone number in chat too. But we're very grateful for our customers. We love helping leagues. I've been working for the league for almost 15 years. Um, so I'm happy to answer questions and help uh, troubleshoot any any concerns that you may have. And I'm I'm thankful Mary Jo just noted noted that we get monthly stats from YouTube. Our primary forum had 1,200 visits during July. Fantastic. Oh, and that's another great note is we do have Google Analytics on the site. So we can give you data. Um, you can email us and we will give you all of the data about the traffic you have on your site. And then to take it one step further, you can add your own Google Analytics tracking to your site so you don't have to rely upon me to get reports from. Um, but I'm happy to do that at any time. Again, just email us at milo at lwbc.org and we can do that. Often grantors want to know how many people went to your site and read your voter guide. You know, that's something that we at the State League deal with all the time. So again, thank you so much to everyone and especially to Amaris, who's really the heart and soul of this project. Um, so thank you again. You'll receive a recording of this um, once it has finished processing. And we hope everyone has a great day. And thanks for all you do uh, for the league. Oh, one more wonderful comment. I can't not mention this. Um, Lynette says, we've received quite a few new members since launching Milo. Fantastic. That speaks to the, yay, yay, we all know we need more members. That speaks to the success of how it performs in Google. People need to find your site and find your voter guides and find all the hard work that you do. And that's why the search engine optimization is really, really so important. So again, thanks for sharing that, Lynette. That makes us feel great. We know that we're, we're doing a great job. We're always open to suggestions. So again, feel free to email us. And thank you so much for joining us today and for all you do for Lee across the nation and we'll talk to everyone soon have a great day thank you all bye-bye